Welcome back to Better Together as One, and Dr. Nahid uh, Dosani is with us. And I really wanted to tell you, we're really about change. This show, Better Together as One, has really been always about bringing change makers to the table. COVID has exposed some big flaws in our social safety net and uh, is really putting a focus on homelessness. So I wondered what your feelings were about that, especially now. And, and is there anything we can do to sort of mitigate uh, the issues we're seeing right now with homelessness? Absolutely, Todd. I, I would say that the COVID pandemic has highlighted fault lines that have existed in our society well before the pandemic hit us um, and has, uh, you know, clearly disproportionately impacted uh, people from, from different walks of life and particularly a subpopulation that's been uh, impacted is people experiencing homelessness. W with that said, um, I've seen an incredible capacity from government, from healthcare, from uh, all aspects of our society to respond. All of a sudden we're using technology to do medical visits uh, you know doctors can call us on the phone um, you know in my little corner of the world as the um uh, re uh, medical director for the region of Peel's COVID-19 homeless response, you know, we've been able to respond in, in four ways. And the first we've actually put, we've actually supported 50% of people experiencing homelessness in the region of Peel into hotels so that they're actually off the street and in shelters so they could physically distance and are not at risk of getting the disease. The second is through partnerships with public health and paramedics. We've been able to you know, support mobile scaled up testing. And third and fourth, those awaiting test results and those who test positive have been going into these very um, uh, socially supported medical uh, units that are called recovery centers. Um, but with that capacity, you know, um, we, you know, we're thinking about the future and like with all these people who are actually in hotels right now, what are we going to do when this pandemic is over? Mm -hmm. We're going to send mm -hmm. them back to the street. And this is not yeah. just in the region of Peel. This is happening in regions everywhere. We are in a very unique position where we can take a dent at some of society's most chronic social problems like homelessness. I know we tend to just accept that homelessness is part of our day-to-day -day life, um, but we can actually um, end this thing and think about um, ways to, uh, pathways to housing for people. Hmm. So wow. powerful, so powerful. And when you, when you talk like that, what are some of your innovative ideas? If you were to dream big, Dr. Nahid, and, and be able to wave your wand, what kinds of things would you like to see happen if, if money and time and resources weren't of issue? What do you think? Let's dream a little. Totally. Uh, wh while I'm, um, I, I'm, I'm being asked here to dream big, I'm, I don't really have to dream that big. The answers are right in front of us and they've been in front of us for a long time. M many people um, may not, may not know this, but um, you know, Canada's large, the world's largest study on ending homelessness happened in Canada. Um, and it was called the at home chez Soi demonstration project. It ran a few years ago. It was a three year study that basically showed that if you give people housing, Thing, people who are homeless with persistent mental illness, if you give them housing um, and then give their services within that housing, um, they feel better, they go to the hospital less, they psychologically do better, and they keep that housing. Um, while those findings were very positive, oh, by the way, the system saves a lot of money. So while yes. <laughs> those findings were very positive, they were never scaled up in Canada. So I, with my magic wand, I would I would basically institute housing first as a policy in the findings of the At Home Chez Soi demonstration project which could probably take a huge dent into homelessness. And in, in communities like Medicine Hat, they've ended chronic homelessness. Um, hmm. The second uh, thing I would do is address um, anything to do with income and low income. So I would raise social assistance rates um, because many people don't realize that social assistance rates by definition still keep people in poverty structurally. The, people who are getting social assistance, they're not, they're not above the poverty line. They're at or below the poverty line. And then I would support interventions that um, better support people with low income, like a guaranteed annual income. Yeah, you, you know, you're so right. There's time has never been better to really shed light and to continue these conversations. We are so honored to be one of the platforms that you've chosen to use to put your voice out there. It is so, so important. We have a couple of more minutes left and I'd love to because we love to get to know the person behind the amazing work that you're doing. Can you tell us a little bit about you, the, the man that take your doctor's hat off? What fires you up? What makes you uh, want, want to do the work you're doing just, just as a human being? Because it takes a lot of energy to be an activist like you are. Tell us a little bit about you, the person. 
I think is um, uh, I think a lot of that boils down to you know the the way I was raised and um, my parents coming to Canada as refugees um, to me uh, uh, you know gave me an uh, uh, an upbringing that was really showed me what happens when inequity is present in our communities and you know I feel lucky very lucky to to be Canadian but the discourse on for example refugees has really changed since since my parents came to Canada and there's 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 a there's a lot of there's not a lot of people there's a sorry there's a lot of of people out there who wouldn't maybe support my parents coming to Canada nowadays. Um, also talking about, you know, the stigmas and stereotypes that exist around people experiencing homelessness. And I just really look at this country and I think about, um, you know, what kind of Canada do we do we want to derive for our communities? I, I, I hope that we want to have a Canada where people have uh, ad, ad, appropriate access to health and human rights. Um, uh, for, sorry, health uh, from a human rights perspective. And, 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 and every day is really uh, focused on that kind of work. Um, I love spoken word and I love, uh, you know, um, uh, social media. And that's, that's kind of like, that's in a nutshell. So like Netflix, <laughs> well, like, are you Netflix in? Like, totally. are you, like, it just seems, yes. oh, okay, good. Okay. Uh, absolutely. For a minute there, I was starting to wonder Huge if you're really Netflix. normal. Netflix crave and prime actually. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I also have to give you a shout out because I love the unpredictability of some of your social media. So, you know, you got the Dr. Garb on, but then all of a sudden, boom, you're dancing, you got your hat on backwards. I love the fact that you are making medicine and these issues accessible, Dr. Nahid, accessible to all people in a really interesting, authentic, and change-making kind of way. And that's why we wanted to have you on the show. So on behalf of all of us, we, we just can't thank you enough for spending your time. We know how busy you are, especially right now with the global pandemic. You have our word, our spoken word, that we're your cheerleaders. We are here to do whatever we can to elevate and empower you to continue to do the work. I've got one thing I'm going to ask you, though. A few years ago, I convinced 17 people to jump out of an airplane with me to raise money for palliative care and hospice, the Bethel Hospice. I want to do it again Would you jump <laughs> with me. Yeah, I, I mean the jumping or the raising money part. Both. I'll raise money. Okay. Both. All right. I'll raise money. Good. I'm not I'm jumping. In. I'm in. That sounds cool. All right. I'm in. We called it Bail for Bethel, Bethel House. Oh, we wow. bailed out of an airplane and we raised That's twenty thousand dollars. So maybe there's an opportunity to raise money for the peach. Okay, um, I'm in. Each program, so we will we'll stay. So thank you so much. Congratulations again on the incredible work and the awards that you're doing so well deserved. Thank you for having me. I really love what you guys are doing. Keep it going. Aww. Thank We're you. We're so happy to have you. So on behalf of Claire, Todd, myself, and of course Chris in our control room at your TV, we are the Better Together as One team. We're here to elevate educate and empower you to be the CEO of your life and health. Until next time, be well.